on the road favourite choice of food? Um, I know I'm quite a fan of Mexican food to be fair. On the road? Yeah. Where do you get Mexican food on the road? KFC burrito. <laughs> there one. On the road. Wow, well, there. Uh, <laughs> Roadkill. Uh, yeah. Just Lean meats. Off. Lean meats. Grill it on the, the engine. Um, oh. I know you always, it's always good to drop into an uh, MS if you can get one. Yeah, KFC though, as you said, it's warm, isn't it? It's not, <laughs> we know it's not good though, it's absolutely packed full of everything fun that's going to make you pretty much diseased if you <laughs> eat it too much. Kentucky Fried Rat, apparently. Oh, nice. But but, no, um, burritos, I reckon, have good. But burritos in there, as you say, like you can smash one of those. They're like 700 calories for a burrito. Then your little chip packet, which you want more and more of. Which I'm number 300 on that yet. So yeah, thousands. So it's, it's a stinker, really, isn't it? Like because you, you'd eat four of those. I'd eat four of those. <laughs> Wouldn't even bat an eyelid of four. Whereas the roadkill, on the other hand, it's lean meat, isn't it? It's been <laughs> kind of running around. It's, it's, it's fair game. <laughs> Game could be, could be the yeah. old pigeon. It could be. I think that that's... And it takes it takes effort to, to skin and cook and, and then tear into it. So calories burnt, probably negative calories. As in, it's like celery. More. It's like celery. Yeah, through the prep and the eating, the chewing, than uh, than it actually gives it. So, um, Did you ever have to do that sort of like weird eating stuff being in the Marines? Or catch worms and sort of. Like, <laughs> do you think worms? Bear, bear grill style. <laughs> Did you have to eat worms? Grubs. Yeah. I was thinking more like, like masculine stuff, like hunt like a deer or something, and then like eat it as part of your training, like eat that the deer. Oh, every time, yeah, every time we've been out, we had to. <laughs> Usually it's the, the troop sprog, so the youngest lad had to go out and catch the deer and wrestle it to the ground, and then. Yeah. And then you ate worms. Yeah. So. Well, but, need no one ever called, obviously. It's <laughs> just, just a myth. Um, no, you do survival training, so you do rabbit and a, and a chicken that you have to, to you know, do, do the obvious with and try, try and uh, try and cook it and make it taste good. But do the obvious with. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people might not like the you know, killing animal side of things, so on this, if we're going to yeah, share really this to our listeners, then... Feet, yeah. Sorry to Fiona, you know, being vegan, we apologise. That's a shout out to Fiona, living <laughs> the vegan lifestyle. Plant power all that, yeah. But um, so, yeah, never really had to use it, but it's just skills that you get taught. But, but we all get used to, like everyone nowadays, just having regular food delivered to your door almost. You don't even have to go and get it, it just literally comes to your door now. But we're all sort of a bit blase about the where it comes from, and that's the big thing about sort of health now is that you want to know where your food comes from. But we don't, do we? Let's be honest, we like, don't, yeah, they. they Manufacturers try to give you a bit more of a story behind stuff, but chances are, you, if you're shopping on price, you're going to be getting the, the poorer quality stuff that, that we know now with documentaries into farms and processes that things aren't the greatest for animal health, for the, you know, they're actually bred for consumption by us. Uh, milk. So. Like we discussed milk earlier. Um, and that's pasteurised milk, especially. Yeah, yeah pasteurised. Your, your raw stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can get milk. raw stuff. Like, I mean, how many people? really on a regular basis getting raw milk like I, I couldn't tell you one person I know that drinks raw or has raw milk within the house like majority of buying sort of your I green I, I, I top I think I've ever had it have you ever had raw milk? it's a little bit sour yeah yeah, yeah, yeah well yeah. I don't know if that was raw milk or some sort of Straight goat's milk the like, other. well if you can you know if you can milk it from the tea then it's raw milk isn't it I mean that's and apparently you can pretty much milk anything with a teat so yeah. it's uh, but apparently it's a little bit more sour like fresh like straight straight from the udder but I don't know like the thought of these but then the cow's got to be a healthy cow yeah well that's it because these guys are like you know mass productions are getting cows who uh, without being horrible and it sounds rank because I'll be honest with you I drank the blue top milk yesterday but <laughs> of, like they've got all the like, the way they're fed with like the terror, terror, yeah, yeah the pesticides in it and like it's just they, they're actually no offence but diseased animals not that any cows are listening I don't think so hopefully I shouldn't have offended any but like and we like yeah I know I'll go I will go in and purposely buy that 69p blue top because it's easy and it makes my protein shake taste better I wanted the extra calories yeah. but is that really health, health conscious you know I'm out there go on you know let's be healthy all the time and then smashing back pus milk that's <laughs> pretty rank <laughs> there's actually some 
radical um, mass gaining diet out there. So the go mad, diet. so a gallon of milk a day, go mad, yeah, go mad yeah, cow, yeah, yeah. Well, and actually the, the amount of I can't imagine a gallon of milk. Yeah, I can't imagine my stomach that, being the, pieces. Uh, and yeah, and the fact that the, the insulin um, response on your on your body from the sugars and the milk and stuff. And the intolerance you'd get and the bacteria, oh, it's terrible, but... But just think about that, sugars and milk, right? How many people would relate, you know, like, milk? Carbohydrates and the sugar, yeah. You know, like, the, uh, do you know, but, I mean, it's great, because I think there's a lot more awareness about your different st- types of, like, non-dairy milks out there now. I mean, it's, it's almost fashionable sort of thing, you know. If you're rocking around and you've got a, a basket or a trolley that's got your arm and milk and whatever in it, you look a little bit like, you know, you're... <laughs> You, well, you can wear your sweaty betty with that, can't you? Be a trendy mum with your almond milk and avocado, and pretty much you are saying, "I am a fitness freak." Is that? Would you? Would you agree with that sort of thing? With the sweat the down the back. Yeah, well. you got to have the, the spinning. Exactly. You've probably still got your headband on, with sweat in there, and if you've not got a slight stench of bo as a male, then you haven't really. Is that? I mean, we haven't worked hard enough. Well, exactly. You haven't. If you've not like yesterday, I was training and. There was we've got obviously a fair few women that come to the tough and that's fantastic and they you know they're in there to graft but for like almost for like one of the first time so lady smell which doesn't smell so I mean not lady smell but you know like perfume and I was in there trying to pick up heavy stuff <laughs> and it was almost like it changed me in from really that tough. well yeah because I was I was kind of like you know when you're in your animal zone you like lift heavy stuff. Like grunting a little bit. I was having to sniff my own arm here to keep me back in man zone because it almost turned me to being like, what are you doing, Josh? Because I could smell yeah. perfume. I was, I was there, I was, I was going to start peacocking and I didn't want to be there. I wanted to be, I wanted to be the, the animal, the tiger, not the peacock. But it is, I think there's yeah. definitely much more awareness, as we digress, uh, about like some of the, the different foods. But Ignorance is kind of bliss in some respects as well with, I think, a lot of meats and stuff. Like, I mean, in all honesty, we know that if you're going to some of the big supermarkets, uh, that you're paying probably for the cheapest chicken out there when it's packaged and you cook it. A lot of the time, people do. They go for the cheaper deal and they cook it. And then, like, they're kind of like, right, where did my chicken go? Because it's reduced into, like, two-thirds of the size it was when I bought it in a packet. <laughs> And you know, full of water. Right? It's just, yeah, exactly. And all those different no flavour and such. And I mean, it's weird talking about like a chicken breast with flavour. Well, yeah, you've got to cut out the, the gnarly bits as well. You know, all those, those bits that you. Gnarly? Yeah. No, that's uh, yeah, <laughs> The bits that you, you don't really don't want to be chewing. Oh, when, when you get that, then you think, well, bit. it's probably not the greatest cut of meat that I could be having. Um, so did you see that study about like with the chickens now, where they've actually been bred now without beaks and stuff? No. Right. Yeah. This is. I mean. What to stop them pecking you? When you, <laughs> yeah. you, you got to try and grab Smack. them. To, to you go got to chase them. No, because basically, it, it, they've they've got to a point they, they can chemically induce these you know birds. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a chicken. Uh, the study was done on, and they're not even growing feathers because then it's like quicker and easier. So they don't have to like de pluck them or whatever you do, I it's guess. On, yeah. yeah, or like you know, it's it's unbelievable. Like it'd, it'd be weird to see these animals or so-called animals because they've just been mass-produced, obviously, to be eaten, which I understand in some respects. But then, like, to just see these weird alien chickens. It makes you do want to go down the vegan style or like meatless days because of that, don't it? Really, in a way. What, do you I mean, mean meat-free Mondays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever works, really. I mean, I heard Arnie does meat-free Mondays now, so. <laughs> but he's still not in bad shape for a yeah. seventy-year-old or whatever he is. So, and that's it, because obviously, it's all about protein, right? And that's such a buzzword at the moment as well. Obviously, <laughs> protein is huge, but understanding that it isn't just, you know, chicken, eggs, you know, and then being freaked out by the yes. fact that if you have whey protein that you then get a look like Arnie talking to the yeah, talking to the legend. trying different um, having a varied diet but maybe putting your plant proteins in there that just for a bit of a variance really and giving your digestive system a rest from all the other stuff you do do you I mean most people I think the average thing they have nine foods or something they rotate regularly 
something that's something I've yeah. heard of recently. Um, it's probably you kind right, of though. go back to the same sort of food to to make, base your meals around. And yeah, the average person you might have a few little variants in there per week, but you still get these nine same foods every week, week in, week out. Well, I know I do. I often eat like similar meals regularly because yeah. a I'm not a master chef. B, I know what I like, and C, it's it's easy, and I know it's you know good for what yeah. what I want really. But I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you find that you get bored? I mean, because everyone just assumes <laughs> if you're like training, you're on chicken and rice, broccoli, right? But they look at you and think you are solely made up of chicken, rice, and broccoli. Yeah. And it's like. Mm, it's probably not what I live off of because no. let's be honest there'd be but then in saying that you know I do like chicken and veg I do like my, I love like a lean mince uh, chilli that's one of my favourites um, so you know I've got some like you know stir, stir fry, fry yeah, yeah stir fry Classic. get a lot of veg in there you know you can vary that taste up and you can get plentiful nutrients from a lot of fresh veg from the stir fry but just chucking a different meat or even just go Meat free if it's a Monday, you know. I don't know what else can you add. Soya if you want to go, you know, tofu. Yeah, tofu. Pop yeah. down the, the veggie or vegan style stir fries, or literally have a vegetable stir fry. Yeah, what's wrong with that? What would be your Start freaking out? If what they would don't be add, your uh, uh, add things into their meals now? But that's it, isn't it? Like they like so many meals are so tasty. If you ever go out and like have a vegetarian style meal, they're massively tasty. I'm saying that as if I do that regularly. I don't, by the way. <laughs> I have done it every now and again and especially when I was like leaning up cutting down and stuff I was looking at different options and maybe look at a menu differently and that's actually not a bad thing because it's same as again like you know go to similar restaurants and you kind of go oh that's what I'm going to have but actually I changed it up a fair few times with a couple of vegetarian meals and some of them like just you know some even just fish based meals and sometimes I didn't you know I didn't used to should I say do on a a regular basis but actually found some of the flavours were brilliant like I mean when you go out what would your like let's go back to KFC right you've gone back to KFC right. and we've we've gone there now and like let's say you and I have both walked in I'm on the road what like what do you honestly look for in your KFC um, depends what time of day and where I'm at and if I'm tracking calories but if it was just a, if I didn't worry too much about what I was eating I just had a normal meal I would try and probably limit as, as much of the greasiness and the skin the fat as possible it's hard to do that I know so I mean those buckets are probably something that contain a, a hell of a lot more calories than maybe a wrap which has maybe some veg in it you know, salad and stuff but maybe the chicken's not coated as much or so you're looking at things like that, which is, is reducing the calories down rather than having some of these high-fat coated chicken drumsticks or whatever they have. I don't know. I've never even had Do you know what? I would be honest with you. What I would have looked for back in the day, though. Value uh, for money. Right. I'd have, I would have looked, gone, right, I've probably got a tenner in my hands and I'm hungry. What can I get the most out of this? Right. Like, if, that's, if that was your choice, then you'd be probably looking at some of those value box meals or something I guess um, where you get your chips your chicken wings or whatever it is um, yeah, yeah. and maybe a sweet corn or a pot of beans or something and you can and your coke or whatever you can obviously switch it out with water if you wanted to save a few hundred calories but I mean if you're smashing ten pounds worth of KFC I don't think you're too fussed about the calories coming from the coke no, no. in fact you probably don't, don't believe that there is calories in the coke because it's liquid so it's yeah. kind of like do you know what who cares and once you've gone in that deep you're pretty much gone but yeah. how many times do you reckon people do go in and get to that point of just being so hungry like get as much yeah, as you can for the money smash it like and uh, walk around with the grease around the face and loving think, life yeah. probably more common than you think I mean uh, I, I just I know that years back that's the sort of thing like alright talking about the times when nutrition wasn't a big thing for me not understanding what the, the and like you know having making smart choices and that were about like student it was like yeah I'm going to eat as much as I physically can for this money and that's yeah. kind of where I think a lot of people kind of go wrong with like deals like I still know I'd rather back up a student but in the core you didn't get paid much but if you lived on camp the food wasn't great so you can go out to Tesco but you try and get as much food as you could for a small amount of money the classic sort of 
bodybuilder type meal, I suppose you call it, is your brown pasta, tin yeah. of sweet, uh, tin of tuna, sweet corn. I suppose it can be tinned as well. Chuck that in, some mayo, mix yeah, it in, and that's big your, mix up. And that's that's your meal. I mean, that's probably cost about one pound. That was, it fills you up, and it's got your proteins, fats, and carbs. Yeah, probably not great for you as such, but that's the thing I'd go for rather than go to a take uh, fast food or takeaway. Um, so what would you do? Like, how would you how would you get around it? Right, so like we we're, we're on, on well we're on the road now, aren't we? And we're low budget. We're on the road. What do you do? If you do pop into somewhere like Marks and Spencers or Waitrose on the, the service station, yeah. just looking for the things that are on the deal. So yeah. maybe you might get one of those salads, uh, or like you know, couscous salad or something that's yeah, marked yeah. down. Maybe a small pack of chicken that's on date today you know, to go out on date, whatever. So you chuck that in. And, uh, I'd call that squeaker's corner. Right. Just because you're like mega tight. Mega tight. Yeah. It's a squeaking. So, so. If, yeah, if you're on a budget, you're looking for those. But otherwise, you're looking at probably you know, inflated prices on a service station and stuff anyway. And you'd, you'd, you'd know that if you're stopping for something, it's you're not going to be getting out of there with two quid spent. It's quite expensive to eat out you know, on the road. Yeah. But it's just as expensive to eat healthy as it is sometimes to fast food places like Burger King you might pay four or five quid in a on the high street but seven or eight quid for a meal of the same quality or value whatever the same size but almost double the price just because you're on the motorway so yeah that is quite tough to do I mean I'd probably if I was travelling have a shake so a whey protein shake in the bag an apple some nuts or whatever just you know some water fill it up on a bottle of water if you're starting to get hungry is a bit bit more of a stop gap than waiting till you get somewhere that you can actually have a proper meal and make, make better choices um, most of the time you're not going to be if you're traveling if you're stuck in the car for more than sort of three hours you're probably looking to eat but three hours you can go without food really couldn't you if you eat before well depend on <laughs> yeah, yeah no definitely a few is say you, you, don't, you don't have to stop and eat you don't have to spend 10 quid on a fast food meal I know that I'd feel so much better if I'd if I'd been on the road for like three hours or so like I mean that that's that's saying that I've been somewhere before and maybe you know to eat stuff for like three or four hours and actually just having some water handful of nuts you know just an apple okay, shake or whatever that's to, uh, that's just being slightly prepared you know and yeah. I think that's but you can always not be funny can, as long as you don't indulge the smashing you know 200 grams of nuts when you snack like you're doing pretty well there as you say you've got those decent uh, benefits for, from those things so I think that it's yeah it's about yeah. being prepared a little bit but you think about that then because no. I'm stupidly tired like, I'd save <laughs> £8 as well and I'd be like buzzing that is a yeah. serious saving I've eaten good stuff feel decent get home or wherever I am going to get a nice meal in um, you know say maybe some of that special chicken that's got no beak and no feathers with some uh, <laughs> with some veg but yeah going back to like, my time in the core as well um, when I'd leave camp on a Friday driving back from Plymouth to Cambridge it'd be uh, like the best of times five six hours possibly drive um, and I was in one of those zones where I wouldn't stop I'd literally just plough through so I'd take uh, food with me so I'd eat uh I want to say, in case anyone's listening, I'll stop and eat, but actually I'll, you know, it'll be on my lap kind of thing, eat, eat my food on the way. Disgusting. <laughs> uh, and I wouldn't stop, I'd just drive through, but I'd have a, have a box of food on my lap, but I'd be eating that as I dro- drove back, just so that I could eat it, for, like, hey, save money, save time, get back quicker, uh, and yeah, it's it kind of... So really, let's be honest. Like, never what, really used to stop at places to eat. So. What we're saying is, like, if you can prep, because that, that was a sick minimum six hours. Sometimes in the car for ten hours, and I'd have a, a, at least some food in, with me. But that's it. As we're saying, it's about prep, though, isn't yeah. it? For that, like, I mean, if you're, if you know you're going to, let's say, we're on the way back from Liverpool. But if you, you know, if you know you're from what Preston, you said Preston, right? <laughs> Cambridge. Preston, yeah, Preston. But Cambridge, you like? Plymouth, actually, but yeah. <laughs> that's what it is killed me anyway it's a Plymouth and you've got sort of six hours like you know you've got that journey you know, like, it's not really ever much you know it's not very often that sort of gets sprung up on you so have a bit of a you know spend five minutes and preparing a little bit of hand food or whatever that you can have on the box you know having some nuts apple bit of whey protein and stuff on the on the go 
you know that's what it's about and I think that if you can start to just think about those sorts of things for people that are on the road I think it is a big difference it is hard um, going to service stations I think that yeah you can make better decisions than others and let's be honest you, can, you know sometimes you are going to be stuck and you have to buy a meal deal for instance or something along those lines but we all know there's better options in the meal deals than you know just just is smashing well yeah it's cheap but is it doing your body is it is yeah it, you know are you getting something from that other than just calories probably, not, probably not doing your health much good is it really those deals sandwich nah. packet crisps at a chocolate bar and a drink just fancy so stopping for one of those <laughs> Snickers name it. your chocolate bar one right now right now you've got a chocolate bar coming at you uh, crunchy I'm out of my it's terrible crunchy is crunchy. such a bad choice of chocolate bar right. what about boost yeah good, good one boost is a good one yeah it's old school decker. let's play that let's just play that game that name one you name one I name one what's the game called no I name a bar you name a bar until someone can't name a bar like, you know, you've never played the game. Right, I'm going to name a bar and then you've got to name a chocolate bar, okay? And I don't want you to bring your stuff back from, like, early 80s. Okay, I'm going to start it out with uh, Twix. Oh, I was actually thinking of the same thing. No, oh, no mate, you're delaying. No delaying tactics. Mark. Snickers. Caramel. Freddo. Uh, Curly Whirly. That's what I was going to go, Chomp. <laughs> Crunchy. Oh, Moro. That's a boost, but what? in Irish. What? Moro is the boost bit in Irish. <laughs> That's not allowed. Uh, Twelve. Ripple. Oh. Kick a chunky. Uh, I'm getting nervous now. Stuttering. That's too long. Two. Uh, one. <laughs> I just done it. Uh, oh, wow. Three. Two. One. Kit Kat! No, oh, Maltese I mean, bar is what yeah. I was thinking. You can see oh, the red yeah. wrapper, but I didn't have it in my head. I'll give you that then, one nil. All right, guys. Yeah, I, mean, I think that what we've got to look at yeah. do is just just, just look at having that heads up. I think we need to try those chocolate bars that we've just said because I've had half of them for years. <laughs> I don't think half of them are. Picnic's not about anymore. Yeah, because it's got to be. No way. If you find a picnic, I'll eat it. And then I'll eat my own hat because I don't believe they're out anymore. That's a throw. That's it's a throwback Thursday chocolate bar on a Friday. If Can't I find do. a picnic before this goes out as a podcast, then I'll, that'll be in the uh, Josh eating it will be the clip. Well, I'm happy to eat a picnic, not the hat. And I don't uh, think yeah. I've got a hat, so I'm fine with eating it. <laughs> anyway, so get as much out of that as you can. If you could get any sense out of it, it was uh, just a little bit of a tester, taster, um, and yeah. we're going to chuck out some probably more relative content in the future um, but uh, I think what I really would like to hear next and I think we're going to get down a little bit more into depth with Rob the Marine or the moustache wearing Marine as I've uh, seen some pretty interesting photos so John. next episode uh, I'm going to get a little bit into nutrition in the core I think it's going to be a, an interesting thing for us yeah. we'll uh, keep going with some tough talk we'll ask some questions from uh, people listeners and uh, peace out sweet Bye-bye.